Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I wanna to talk to you about using Flexbox in CSS. Flexbox is basically just a collection of CSS attributes that you can use together to create really powerful grid layouts in your CSS. So a grid layout is basically a layout where you have like a bunch of different uh, items or containers and they're all sort of interacting with each other and they're actually responsive. So if you would shrink the screen size, all those items would respond and they would reorganize themselves. And if you make the screen bigger, they'll reorganize themselves back into their original layout. And Flexbox is really, really good at helping us to make layouts just like that. So the best way to learn is just for me to kind of demonstrate how this works and then you'll be able to get started using Flexbox in your layouts. So I just wanna to talk to you about my setup. Over here I have uh, a few of these like divs and these are just sort of like gonna be the items in my website. Um, they're sort of like my grid items. And then I have this other div here which is a container. So if you look in the HTML, you'll see that we have this div right here, and this is actually that pink div that you see over here. And inside of that, we have all five of these little blocks. And inside of this container div, I'm using this flex container CSS class. And that's the class that we're gonna be dealing with the most when we're talking about Flexbox. So if you're creating a Flexbox layout, you wanna lay it out similar to this. So you have this parent div that has the flex class on it, and we're actually gonna be adding attributes to this class and then you wanna have all your flex items inside of it. So over here in my style.css file, I have this flex container class and I wanna start adding stuff on here. The first thing we need to do to set up Flexbox is to change our display. So I'm gonna go ahead and just say display flex. And right away when I do this, the web browser is gonna respond. And so it's basically just gonna reorder and reorganize all of these different navigational elements. And you can see it does that. So it takes them from being vertically stacked and it stacks them up horizontally inside of this Flexbox container. So if I was to resize this, you'll see that all the elements inside of that container resize with it. If I was to make it bigger, they'll get as big as they can go and then they'll stop growing. So it's dynamically changing the size of these different elements depending on the size of the screen. And that's kind of like the bread and butter of Flexbox. That's what it does well. We can add in a couple other attributes that go along with this Flexbox display. And the first one that you're probably gonna wanna use is Flex Direction. Flex direction will basically specify which direction the tiles are getting stacked. So right now, these styles are getting stacked in a row formation. So they're stacked like horizontally inside of a row. I can also use something called row reverse. So I'll just type in row reverse here. And what this will do is it'll reverse the order that they're getting stacked in. So now, instead of getting stacked one, two, three, four, five, they'll get stacked in the opposite way. So five, four, three, two, one. And you can do the same thing with columns. So instead of a row, I can specify a column and now they'll all lay themselves out in a column just like this. And same thing with column, I can do column reverse and it'll reverse the order. So you can either lay your elements out in rows or in columns, it doesn't really matter. I think for the rest of this tutorial, we're, we're gonna use rows. So we'll just kind of use that as our default. The next value that we can define is called justify content. So you're just gonna type justify content right here. And we can give this a number of values. I'm gonna talk you through some of them. The, the first is just flex start. And this is kind of like the default. And flex start will basically align all the items towards the left side. So you can see all of these items are aligned over here uh, on the left side. If I wanted to, I could change this to flex end and it'll change the side that these are lining up on. So now instead of lining up on the left side, they're, they're gonna line up on the right side, right? So it's lining up over towards the end of the list. We can also use uh, just center, and center is really awesome because it allows you to easily center your content. If you've ever used CSS before, you'll know that uh, before Flexbox, like centering elements on the screen was like a huge pain. But now with Flexbox, it's like super easy. So I can make it so they just stay right there in the middle and we don't have to worry about it. You can also use two other values and they define like how the elements are spaced out. So right now, all of these elements are sort of just like clumped together like this, but you can actually space them out. So we can justify content and we can use space between. And this will put a bunch of space between all the elements as they get bigger. So 
as these elements expand, you can see that a bunch of space is opening up in between them. We can also use, instead of space between, space around. And this will spread the space around more evenly uh, through these things. So they're still spaced out, but you can see that the space is evenly distributed across all this. So it looks a little bit uh, nicer. So you can use space between and space around to control like how they're spaced out when they grow and they shrink. The next attribute we can define is a flex wrap. And what you see right now is when I make the screen size a lot smaller, these individual items are also shrinking. But in a lot of scenarios, you're gonna want these items to say to stay the same size, right? Especially if you had like text in something like this, you wouldn't be able to read the text because it would just be too small. So we can use something called flex wrap and I can just specify that down here. And flex wrap will basically just allow these items to wrap around each other. So they'll like spill onto the next line. And we can just say wrap. And now when I refresh the page, all of these items will like line up again. So as we expand the page, they'll like sort of unravel. And then when we compress the page, they'll split down into a vertical list. This is something that could be really good if you're building something that you want to look at on mobile, right? So you can sort of lay out your flex so that on a big screen size, everything is ordered correctly. And then when you bring it down to a smaller screen size, everything like positions itself so it's in a vertical line. We can also use instead of wrap, we can use wrap reverse and wrap reverse will do exactly what wrap does, but just the opposite. So you can see now we're starting up here with five, four, three, two, one. So it's wrapping it in the opposite order. And it's also doing it from down here. So wrap, wrap reverse, they're both kind of the same thing. And if you don't want any wraps at all, you can just put no wrap and then it will just continue to sort of smush them together. I'm gonna keep this set at wrap though, cause I like the way it looks. Now, another cool thing you can do with Flexbox is determine how the different navigational titles are positioned in relationship to one another. So if you look here, you can see that I have some of these grids are a little bit smaller. And so these ones are bigger than these ones. And one of the things that Flexbox allows you to do is control what happens with all of this extra space. So if you have a bunch of elements on your site, some of them might be longer, some of them might be shorter. You can specify how those are gonna lay out. So right now you'll notice that the tops of all of these elements are all at the same level. But I can actually change that. So I can use an attribute called align items and I can give this a couple different values. The default value is flex start. And so flex start is gonna have where all their tops are at the same line. We can do the opposite of that, which is gonna be flex end. And flex end will basically do the same thing, but it'll move it down to the bottom here. And so now all of their bottoms are lined up just like they were up here at the top. So it's like the opposite. We can also do center. And this is my favorite one. And it just puts everything right here in the center. So none of the tops, none of the bottoms are lined up. You could basically just draw like a straight line through all of these. And so, you know, flex start, flex end center, those are gonna be some really useful ways that you can align these items, uh, especially when you have items of different heights. We can also control how this content looks when it's on different lines. So when I bring this guy in here, you'll notice that we have like some space in here and we have some space up here and some space down here. This is basically how our different lines are laid out. And if I want, I can modify that. So I can say, instead of align items, I can align the content. So we can say align content and let's start with flex start. So flex start will probably do what you think it's gonna do at this point, it's basically gonna bring everything up here to the top. So there's gonna be no space between any of these. All the space is gonna be down there. So as we wrap them, you can see it's basically just holding them all up there at the top. Flex end is gonna do the opposite. Hopefully by now you're catching on to what all these different things do. It's This one's putting them all the way down at the bottom and we can use the one we were using before. So we can just do center and this will put them in the center again with no space in between. And we can also use that same space around and space between, just like we did with the horizontal layout. So this will space around will put some space in the middle and some space here up top. Space between will only put space in between the two of them. So there's gonna be no space up here at the top or the bottom. So you can align your individual items like this um, horizontally this way, and you can also align them vertically that way. So you can really control every single aspect 
of how this grid is gonna look and feel on your CSS. So in addition to modifying this entire flex container, I can also modify individual items in my flex layout. So you remember this align items attribute, we have it set to center. And basically what that means is that all of these items are going to be set here in the center. But if I was to change this, for example, to flex start, now all of these items are gonna be aligned at the same height, right? So they're all aligned up here at the same level. I could modify one of these attributes individually. So imagine I wanted this four to be laid out in the center. I could change that individually on this one attribute and all the other ones would stay the same. So if I go over here to my index.html file, I can come down here and this div right here that I just highlighted is that number four container. So I can give this a style tag and I can use an attribute called align self. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna actually allow us to control um, this align items value, but for the specific element. So I can say align self and we'll just say center. And so now this should be, instead of using that flex start, it should use center. When I refresh the page, you'll see that this comes down here into the center. So I can individually control what each one of these items is doing on its own, and then I can control the list as a whole. And that really makes Flexbox powerful because you literally have control over every single element in the grid. So that's sort of a basic overview of Flexbox. Obviously I didn't cover you know every single possible thing that you could do inside of it. And really your job now is to just take Flexbox and go have some fun, you know, build your first grid layout, see how everything works, play around with it. You know, obviously you can use actual elements instead of just these little blocks. Um, and I do wanna show you one thing. This is a PDF that I've been using online and I sort of use it as a cheat sheet. It's on this website. Um, j o n i b o l o g n a dot com forward slash content forward slash images forward slash flexbox sheet and i think this is a really well done little flexbox cheat sheet if you just scroll down it literally tells you everything you need to know about using flexbox and i found this really helpful so i wanted to kind of show it to you guys and you know i would recommend going and downloading this and just following it and you know using it as a reference while you're working with flexbox but that has been the Draft Academy tutorial on Flexbox. I hope you guys learned something and I hope you're ready to go out now and build your best CSS layout yet. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.